Good day everyone. I'm really excited to get to show you today my HP LaserJet 4M laser printer from 1992. This is going to be a full overview and demonstration of the printer as well as a look into all of its features and a little bit of the history as well. I figure first and foremost I will start with a preface for this video. First of all, the LaserJet 4M is nothing but the Macintosh version of the standard HP LaserJet 4. It is identical to the LaserJet 4 in every way. All the, all the 4M is is a regular 4 with some optional components included as standard. The 4M is otherwise identical to the 4 in every way, even the firmware identifies it as a LaserJet 4, all the demo pages and test pages identify it as a LaserJet 4, and a plug and play operating system that has support for the LaserJet 4 and 4M will also detect this as a standard LaserJet 4 unless you specifically tell it that it's a 4M. As such, 95% of what I'm going to talk about in this video today is applicable to the LaserJet 4 as well as the 4M. And as such, I'm actually going to refer to this printer, for the most part in this video, as a standard LaserJet 4. I will only refer to it specifically as a 4M when I address the very few specific features that the 4M has that the 4 doesn't. Now, this video was originally going to be a single, one-part video. You know, that would have been the logical uh, way to go. But uh, this turned out to be the longest video I've ever filmed in the history of the Maritime Man. I'm not even going to say how long this came out to be because it literally embarrasses me. But uh, I don't know how it happened, but I talked, you know, just use your imagination, but I talked for this about this thing way longer than I ever thought I would have. So this is actually going to be a multi-part series, just split up into what I feel would be logical parts. So, uh, yeah, this, what you're watching right now is the first of what will be several parts. I don't know how many parts, four, five, six parts, I have no idea. And I, I, hope, I hope you guys like learning a ton of stuff about one particular thing that normal people wouldn't give a crap about, because that's what you're going to get. You know, I wouldn't feel right to present something like this and not give you the whole story, give you everything you ever wanted to know or never wanted to know about it. So uh, that's what I'm going to do, but rather than upload it as one single video and embarrass myself more, I think I'll just split it up into multiple parts. That way it should be more watchable. Next in the preface, for those of you who watched my first video of this printer when I first got it, I will briefly go over uh, how I acquired this thing and what I've done to it uh, in preparation for this video. So, this originally belonged to the university. Where it was used and when it was retired, I don't know. But uh, all I know is I found it outside the door of the tech shop and stuff put outside the door of the tech shop is being disposed of. It's up for grabs for anyone who wants it. And uh, I found this thing there and I just had to get it. I uh, called a taxi and I brought it home. I, uh, I've wanted one of these for a long time. I've wanted a LaserJet 4 for as long as I've ever known about the LaserJet 4. And I think the first time, actually probably the only time until now, that I ever had an experience with a LaserJet 4 is with one we had in middle school. And that was eight years ago. So I brought this thing home, turned it on for the first time. It made a strange noise, which it shouldn't have made. And the vacuum fluorescent display was very dim. Well, other than that it seemed to be fine. It never made any more strange noises and the vacuum fluorescent display brightened up very quickly. Evidently this thing had not been turned on between when it was retired and when it was put out to pasture. That's why the display was so dim. It is no longer dim when you turn it on. It starts right up at full brightness. So that's evident of something that has not been turned on for years and years. Second, when I tried printing on this thing it jammed at the final exit roller here. So all I did was I cleaned all the exit rollers. I probably didn't even have to. I just took a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol 
and just clean the rubber rollers and uh, it's still jammed but as I tried again and again eventually it just started working and uh, I've printed almost a hundred pages on this thing since I got it and I think it's only jammed once or twice so that's pretty nice my LaserJet 4P which I got a couple of years ago was the same way it jammed when I first got it but as I started using it more and more it got better and now that works just fine as well so yeah it feeds the paper through fine other than that uh, it was giving the toner low message and it left black streaks on the paper well I bought a brand new new old stock toner cartridge from eBay and that's all this thing needed left to work perfectly it now prints absolutely perfect and this printer now works absolutely perfect in just about every way very very nice kinda odd though a funny story um, a couple of weeks after I acquired this thing I brought it home back home to mom's house because that was where the new toner cartridge I got for it was shipped so I wanted to bring it home so I could try it out immediately with the new cartridge and after I got it home this thing wouldn't work at all anymore whenever you tried printing the paper would barely get into the feed mechanism you know it, like one second after it started feeding the paper it would throw a paper jam error and I just could not figure out what was going on I checked everything there was no stray paper anywhere I just couldn't figure out what was going on so I started taking the printer apart LaserJet 4 is extremely easy to take apart. It was designed from the ground up to be very serviceable. And part of what makes it so nice to take apart is that a lot of the components of the printer are, are arranged into assemblies. So if, if say a gear breaks, just as an example, if a gear or a wheel or something broke somewhere in the printer, you wouldn't replace that individual gear or wheel you would replace the entire assembly there's an there's a feed assembly so the entire assembly that deals with bringing the paper from the paper cassette into the printer then you have then it goes through the toner cartridge and the transfer roller then the paper goes through the fuser the fuser is one whole single assembly that can be replaced if anything on it breaks then it goes through the exit assembly the exit assembly is also an entire collection of parts that deals with bringing the paper out to the output tray and while it is more expensive to service the printer that way it does make it much easier much quicker less downtime and uh, it's more reliable overall because if you know if, if one small part breaks you get to refurbish that entire assembly put a whole new assembly and the, it just makes the printer more reliable and it extends its life so I had it apart you know I uh, I took the outer housing off and I looked at the feed assembly and nothing looked uh, out of place there and I put it back together and it would still act the same so I took it apart even further I removed the exit assembly and the feed assembly and well wouldn't you know it when I removed the feed assembly two bits of plastic fell out of it so I thought well maybe that had something to do with it I couldn't find where the plastic uh, bits came from but I put it back together and lo and behold it worked so evidently those two bits of plastic I think they are were already there before the printer quit working but I think what happened was the car ride from here to mom's house jostled those plastic bits in such a position that they tri started tripping one of the paper jam sensors and that's why this thing would immediately give a paper jam upon trying to print so I'm glad I fixed that no problems anymore I did later find where those plastic bits came from and uh, it's something interesting you guys if you watch the first video I made of this printer when I opened the uh, multi-purpose tray and I tried to close it again I couldn't close it I know in the video I'm like why can't I get that closed but it turns out the reason I can't get it closed is because it's broken that there should be a complete circle and that's where one of the plastic bits broke off and there's the other right there so that's where the plastic bits came from and they would have fell in there into the feed assembly so this part is supposed to be on those round pegs right there so the tray is supposed to only come down to here and then it just buttons back up but uh... it's broken so you gotta lift it up like this and then close it up so uh, yeah, I wish I hadn't have thrown those plastic bits away now, else I would glue them back on, but oh well. Um, 
the multi-purpose tray is still usable. So yeah, that's the story with that. Finally, something interesting I noticed when I had this printer part. If you guys watched the last video, you'll see a part where at one point I, whoops, I have the toner cartridge out and it started printing a test page with the toner cartridge out, which it's not supposed to do, not at all. The cover was open and the cartridge was out and it was starting to feed this paper through. And I'm like, wow, you know, the printer's firmware or something or a sensor somewhere must have got confused because it's not supposed to attempt to print with the cover open. It's definitely not supposed to attempt to print with the cartridge out. Having the toner cartridge out is supposed to throw an EP cart error. So I'm like, wow, that's really weird, you know, printer just must have got confused somehow. Well, it turns out that's not the case. And this kind of worried me when I found this out. Down there is a switch that detects when the lid is open or closed. This right here presses against that switch when the lid is closed. When I had this thing apart and I took the top lid off, I discovered that at some point in this printer's life before I got it, it had been taken apart. Someone had taken it apart and they taped down that switch. They took some scotch tape. I didn't even see it, which is strange because the tape was, the tape ended right here. They had taped the switch down and the tape went under this cover and down here. So this printer had been taken apart before I got it. And that very much worried me, especially combined with the fact that it suddenly refused to print at all. So yeah, the uh, switch was taped down and I thought, well, gosh, maybe that switch is broken. And I started worrying because it's like, oh man, you know, printer suddenly stops working. I find a switch that's taped down. How much money am I going to start throwing into this to uh, get it to work? Which isn't something I planned on doing anyway. Although I uh, certainly would have considered it if I had to. But I removed the tape and... No problem, the switch works absolutely fine. Evidently, someone just taped it down when they had this apart for testing purposes and never removed it. So yeah, it's kind of funny. So what happened was, you know, I opened the lid. Well, the printer never realized that the lid was open. And you can see this in the video. I opened the lid. When I opened the lid, it's supposed to throw a printer open error, but it didn't. In the video, I open the lid, the printer doesn't know it's open. I removed the toner cartridge. But because the printer doesn't think the lid's open, it doesn't think I've removed the toner cartridge. You know, the first event has to happen before the second event does, according to the printer's logic. So as far as the printer was concerned, everything was fine, and it tried printing with no toner cartridge. But, nothing wrong. That switch is fine, I removed the tape, everything functions normally now. In summary, this printer had a lot of weird things happen to it, but they all turned out to be a non-issue. You know, I just discovered them, rectified them. Thing works perfect now. I've put no money into this. All this thing needed to print perfectly was a new toner cartridge. And there it is. That new HP 98A toner cartridge. New old stock from 2005. Cost me $11 on eBay. Plus $3 to pick it up from the States and it's perfect. This thing prints beautifully now. So the only thing that's wrong with this printer now is that the hinges on the multi-purpose tray are broken. But that's not a big issue anyway because the multi-purpose tray actually still works. The rubber pickup roller on the multi-purpose tray is rotten which is kinda interesting because the uh, cassette pickup roller the D roller that swipes down and picks the paper up when you first start printing. The one for the cassette is absolutely fine. There's lots of grip still on it. But the one for the multi-purpose tray is all, it's all dried up and don't know how well you can see it there, but there's the pickup roller for the multi-purpose tray and it's all dried and cracked. So sometimes it does actually jam when you use the multi-purpose tray, but other times it works just fine. So I could replace that pickup roller if I wanted to, but I never will. But it's interesting because presumably the paper cassette was used many orders of magnitude more than the multi-purpose tray would have been. Yet the cassette's pickup roller is fine, but the multi-purpose's roller is all dried out. 
Kind of interesting. Well, that concludes the first part in our series on the HP LaserJet 4M printer from 1992. Join me in the next part when we will go over the history of the LaserJet 4 as well as an initial overview of the printer. I really hope you'll join me and I hope you guys enjoyed this part and I'll see you in the next one. This is one of the most revered, if not the most revered, computer keyboard of all time. These are so famous, not only in the vintage uh, computing community, but the computing community as a whole.